so powerful, she's considered a goddess by some, including Magneto. It's time to bring on the forecast. That's right, it's Storm. She was introduced on screen in the second season of Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, where she appears with the rest of the X-Men as Firestar goes back to see her old friends at the Academy. She's in her white suit, showing her midriff and thighs, thigh-high white boots, a cape that is black inside and blue outside, with a red ruby set in the collar, and a black headdress with her lightning white hair and bright blue eyes. Then, we see her flying with the rest of the team as they take on Juggernaut, striking him with a huge bolt of lightning. I can't believe that Kurt led us into a trap. He's a practical joker, but this... Then, in Pride of the X-Men, a pilot for a potential animated X-Men show that aired in 1989, Storm appeared for the first time in a dedicated X-Men outing. And this time, she has lighter skin, more olive in color, and her eyes are black. Her costume this time out is all black with blue shading, similar to shape and design to the first one, but no white to be seen. The hair is still bright white. Well, Wolverine, you were against Kitty being a member of the team. What do you think now? Probably the most iconic version of Storm is the one from X-Men the Animated Series. She still has her white hair and wears a white skin-tight bodysuit, with a white cape showing absolutely zero skin this time, and no headdress either. The white suit also has the red X symbol on both sides of her chest, gold bracers, and gold accents on the color and where the zipper would be. This show also showed Storm's powers in their full glory, fully controlling the elements, one of the most powerful members of the team. When her eyes turn white, things start to get serious. In season 5 of the show, Storm travels to an alien planet when its king, Archon, asks for help to save it. It's under threat from Storms, and she has identified Storm as someone who can help them. This makes a double episode arc titled Stormfront. If we stand up to the troublemakers, they will give up their cruel designs. If we fail, their intolerance will grow and many could perish. When Spidey pays the X-Men a visit for help with the mutation problem in Season 2 of Spider-Man the Animated Series, Storm is there to lend a hand against Sentinels, amongst other things. This is the same Storm from X-Men the Animated Series, as they presumably exist in a shared universe. He is a walking storage battery! A small team of X-Men appeared in Fantastic Four, including Storm, recognizable by her iconic white hair, seen only from the back. When we think of live-action Storm, Halle Berry is who immediately comes to mind. She embodied the character perfectly from her debut in X-Men. This movie did a great job of showing her powers, with her eyes turning white, able to control the weather with ease, bringing snow, ice, lightning, and wind to her aid. A memorable moment is the station fight where it seems Sabretooth has the better of her before she musters her strength to summon lightning to send him flying through the air. Her white hair remained and was long in this first live action appearance. The costume was all black, like a black leather version of the full white bodysuit we got in the animated series, complete with a cape attached to her wrists. The X symbol is silver and on her belt this time. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? In X-Men Evolution, which also aired in 2000, a new animated version of Storm hits screens, this time in a big flowing dark blue cape with white inside, and a dark blue bodysuit with the red X symbol on the collar were present. Unlike the other classic X-Men members, she is an adult and serves as a mentor in Charles Xavier's school. In the episode The Cauldron Part 1, she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mystique in an awesome fight scene, showing her awesome powers. Kinda nice, isn't it? It certainly is. But that doesn't excuse you and Scott from leaving the ship. Barry returned in 2003's X2. This time, her white hair was a little shorter, but other than that, the visuals were very similar to the first movie. In an epic moment, her powers are shown in full force as she causes a storm filled with tornadoes to stop fighter jets from chasing them down. This really shows how OP Storm is in certain situations. Yes, at a school for people like us, where we can be safe. Apart from her usual costume, Storm appears in a distinctive dark blue fabric suit with black shoulders in the third movie. Her hair is also much shorter in this film. A standout moment from this film was her fight with Callisto, which ended up being a crazy matchup. What the hell was that? Storm. Look, you can't just change the rules when you feel like it. I'm trying to teach him something. This isn't a game, Logan. Storm's cultural roots were explored in the 2009 animated series Wolverine and the X-Men, with the character's design taking a lot from traditional African tribal styling. 
This series reveals Aurora Monroe's past as a child thief in Cairo. After manifesting her weather-controlled powers, she was worshipped as a goddess by African tribes before becoming an X-Man. Her X-Men uniform draws inspiration from the X-Men evolution design, but breaks away with headpiece and exposed shoulders, adding a distinctive touch. Warren, right now what's important is that you heal. Everything else can wait. In a deleted scene from 2009's X-Men Origins Wolverine, a young Storm makes a brief cameo while Logan is on a mission with Team X and conjures up a rainstorm. In 2009, we got a chibi version of Storm thanks to the Superhero Squad show, and it's basically a squished down version of the Storm we saw in Wolverine and the X-Men, and the classic dark suit Storm look. I shouldn't be, but evidently not all of my overseas credits transferred. A similar Storm would appear in a motion comic in 2010, this time not chibified, and showing a little more skin with a more open bodysuit. Storm finds out that Juggernaut is in Wakanda, tracking him down using Cerebro, and she sets off to stop him, bringing her to team up with Black Panther. Juggernaut, remember him? The guy who gave you the beating last week. The Juggernaut is now in Africa. Storm also appeared in MAD several times over the years, starting in 2011. In Season 1, Episode 25 titled, The Clothis, she advises Rogue to touch one of the Office characters to absorb their knowledge. In I Hate My Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, she is seen with Wolverine and Cyclops outside a window, laughing at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Lastly, in the episode The X-Mentalist, there's a crossover between the show Elementary and the X-Men. The storm we got in 2011's Marvel anime X-Men was clearly inspired by the Halle Berry look from Last Stand. The hair and facial features are like an anime version of that character, while the costume adopts a more revealing blue design with gold trim. The team heads to Japan to rescue Armor who's been kidnapped and do battle with the U-Men in this standalone story. She wanted to keep her hands clean. If she didn't hire someone like the U-Men, she'd have to do the butchering herself. In X-Men First Class from 2011, we see a young Storm in the Cerebro sequence as Charles is seeking out young mutants, trying to find those suitable for the program. It's just a glimpse, but it's clear that it's meant to be a very young version of Storm. Storm was also featured in Wolverine vs. Sabretooth, a motion comic from 2014 in a supporting role. In a much more vivid yet dark animation style, she's in an open-shouldered costume with her classic headdress, white eyes, and gold bracelets. Halle Berry returned for X-Men Days of Future Past in 2014, part of the future team holding off the Sentinels to give Logan as much time as possible back in the past. As with all of Barry's appearances as Storm, her hair was different. This time, the shortest it's been in character, and the suit has softer fabrics and a more military tactical style with the same cap as before. We can't stop that many. No, but we can slow them down. Storm appeared in a second anime show in Marvel Disc Wars The Avengers in 2014. The look here was an anime version of the costume from Wolverine and the X-Men. Storm is only seen briefly, arriving alongside Colossus and Iceman with the disc containing Beast to aid Wolverine. In X-Men Apocalypse, which was released in 2016, we got a look at a younger Storm. This time, played by Alexandra Shipp, we see Storm as a teenager, trying to find her way as an orphan before being recruited as one of Apocalypse's horsemen. And as he amplifies her powers, making her one of the hardest-hitting mutants, this is what turns her hair bright white. The costume here is halfway between the dark suit from Wolverine and the X-Men, and the Halle Berry leather look from the original trilogy. The haircut is a mohawk in this movie, which is a nod to Uncanny X-Men number 173 from 1983, where the hairdo was meant to be a joke but ended up sticking around. In Deadpool 2, we briefly see Ship's young Storm again as Deadpool quips the Colossus about never seeing main team mutants at the mansion, right next to a room containing the whole crew who quickly shut the door to avoid him. Ship returned again in 2019's Dark Phoenix. Her powers were shown in full with some epic lightning and wind action during the train fight sequence. Storm is more in the background in the story, helping the team in their fight against Jean and the alien threat. She's clearly been growing her hair out in this timeline, no longer rocking the mohawk, and now wearing the blue and yellow X suit to fit her new job as an X-Men team member. Sometimes you want to believe people are something that they are not, and then by the time you realize who they are, it's too late. Storm's look when X-Men 97 picks up where the animated series left off is maybe the most different out of the team members. Her classic white and gold suit remains, but her hair is in a mohawk 
and the sharper animation defines her features more than ever before. She's hit with Executioner's Inhibitor Laser as she protects none other than Magneto, stripping the Omega-level mutant of her powers seemingly forever. But we will find out as the season goes on if the team can find a way to bring her back to her godlike levels of power. Ancient Sands, heed my command and reclaim these relics of hatred! With Deadpool and Wolverine likely packed with cameos, Halle Berry rumors aren't surprising. She was vital to the original X-Men team, and Marvel seems ready to honor that legacy before a full MCU recast. Maybe we'll even see Alexandra Shipp reprise her role alongside Barry 